You know, when it comes to drawing, I, I really just sit down and have fun with it. Uh, I think a funny thing about drawing, um, in my experience, is that people seem to quit doing it when they were young. And it was interesting because, you know, I saw people taking that, that out or that way of, uh, maybe just moving on from something. And it's funny because uh, I always knew that was an option for me, that I could, I could quit. I think the difference for me was that I really found something really interesting about it, but also it served a real purpose for me. Yeah, you know, drawing for me was uh, very therapeutic. It did a few things. Uh, one of the things was just to entertain me. It it really it really made things uh, fun a lot of times. In in times where I was just very bored or stuck somewhere, and it actually gave me the ability to really kind of self regulate, um, maybe emotionally, but also get a lot more from what was happening around me because, you know, I was developing my skills as, a, as a, an illustrator, essentially. And what you're always doing is practicing fundamentals, um, but really observing the world around you and trying to understand what you're seeing and how to, how to draw it um, or make artwork from it, something like that. So what you see now in my drawing here of the world turtle, it's really 35 years in the making. So my lines are going to look real different to your lines. Um, and I, I really like to do things in my drawings that are like, um, I like form. So I like, I like adding these extra shapes, these uh, three-dimensional kind of forms, because the opportunity is there to do it. I know I can make that, that chin look round, the nose look round, and I like it. It's fun to me because as soon as you start putting in those, those kind of round shapes and, and the lighting, you just put in some accurate lighting, all of a sudden um, it turns into something new. So in this recording, I just really wanted to kind of like chat a little bit um, as I went through my drawing. And this is sped up eight times. So this is eight times as fast as I was going. Um, so don't let it discourage you that it looks like I'm drawing this incredibly fast. Obviously, I can't um, draw this fast and be accurate at the same time. But nevertheless, it actually takes some time to do a copographic image. Um, you know, you still have to follow the lines. You still have to, um, you know, kind of redraw. The, the illustration that's been designed for you to draw. I do a lot of like fun things, I think, um, where I like playing with texture or figuring out how I could add new lines. Um, I drew all these originally, so it might be, might be easier for me um, overall. Really, I would encourage people to um, just have fun with it and make it their own. Just figure out how you want to do things or how you want to explore your creativity, how you want to just have fun or, you know, really you don't have to make it a big, a big deal of making it perfect or doing everything right. I, I think a lot of the people that would draw in the book um, and really currently who have the book, who got it recently. Um, and that is the first Kobe graphic book by Kobe line, the drawing book. Um, a lot of people that get it, they're going to be the first time drawers. So really, you know, I've heard a few questions already that are like, you know, how do I tell, you know, I, I, they said, I have trouble telling when my pencil is even on the page sometimes. And that blows my mind because that, that's pretty like, 
early on for me. So it's hard for me to like give some kind of a solution for that. But I think that's just one of those natural um, good stresses that happens is, you know, if you play guitar or if you learn to write or you're going to take up archery or Kung Fu or meditation or whatever, you have to go through like all of the basics. And there's a certain benefit to that, to, to being able to, to do it like an amateur and see it with fresh eyes and come at everything new. So you can see now we, we zoomed out and you can see the whole picture. I really, I wanted to make this one because I just always found the idea very kind of wild. It's, it's, you know, when it comes to religious ideas or mythical ideas, um, they're very out there. They're very heavy. And this one was such a visual one. Um, and I just, I wanted to have a try at it. It doesn't belong to any one culture. There's a lot of cultures that have this uh, myth yeah, in their story. And I made it a big tortoise. Really, it's a turtle. Um, apparently, that distinction that distinction is pretty important. But I wanted to draw mine to look more ancient, so I feel like I've just given it a lot of interesting uh, shapes to draw. So you can see on the first part where I did the the head and part of the its left arm, you see a lot of the shading I've done. But really, I start out, start out doing. Um, a lot of the simpler lines. So I'll do this like kind of outline. But as I'm doing it, I'm, I'm already thinking about how I want to um, kind of play with that, how I want to add to it and break up the shapes a little bit. So I want to do the whole picture, which means I want to follow all the shape guides. And I'm doing a pretty good job just doing that. And I'll go back over it, I think, a little bit later. And so here I'm kind of looking at the scales and what I tend to think about is depth. So I could just follow the lines and that's fine. But if you give these images a little bit more thought, you realize like all of these things are three dimensional and it just might be really difficult to picture what happens in three dimensions. But really all of these scales, they protrude a little bit. They all have shadow under them. You know, they all block some of the light that's hitting them. And they create a nice pattern. So those kind of ideas, although they might seem challenging, um, just play with them. Take one of them and just do a whole drawing and think about that one idea and see what happens. See if you can you can put anything anything new out there. A lot of times what I do, I make really, um, I really like different line weight. So sometimes my lines will go really thin and I like it when they go really thin and then there's a really thick kind of like corner. So if you look around on my page, you might see me uh, putting that in there. And eventually I'll do it on purpose here, like I'll, I'll go through it to clean it up and add a little bit more of my flavor to it. And that's usually what it looks like. It's, it's, it's that kind of effect. And that's just something I picked up from, um, from studying artists that I really liked. You know, as you start drawing in these books, I would encourage you to do that. It took me a lot of years to, to realize that, that that's a real benefit is uh, finding artists that you really like. Before I go past it, the shading I'm doing here, you can see I have the pencil fully on the side of this nice sharp piece of lead. So I'm, I'm using a lot more surface area to try to like, almost like do larger brush strokes, you could say. And and that's when drawing actually starts to feel like painting. You, you really, all you're doing is you're putting graphite down on paper, right? So if you give it a lot more surface area, you're going to get this nice kind of wide, um, Kind of bit, and then then now I'm going in with just the tip and detailing it up a little. 
And that's what I like. I like textures. I like a bit of form. And when you add all of these kind of pieces, even pattern, negative space, you add all these to an image, it makes your image more interesting to look at. So it actually holds the attention of people longer. If you just have a picture and it's all it is is a simple line all over the place, one line, um, you know, it, it actually is more boring to look at. And that's only because that's the way our mind and eyes work. We're more attracted to complex looking things, uh, like more detail. Uh, you know, another thing uh, I've, been, I've been thinking about for a while to mention on, on one of my videos is the feeling um, that I'm sure some of you have experienced. And I, I kind of grew up dealing with this feeling that, was, I don't even know if it's a feeling, it, it's pretty much just a fear. You get to a certain point in your drawing, um, whatever it is, it could even be a copiographic page but it might just be a doodle you're working on or a page you're working on, on your own. And you just get to a point when um, it, you're, it's going really well, but you become kind of scared that you're gonna ruin it by taking the next step. And I have that even still to this day, and I've been drawing for, what, like 30 years, 35 years, I'm 35, somewhere in there. But what I realized after a lot of drawing was, you know, it's actually, although that's a nice thing to aim for, which is a nice drawing, something you can be really proud of and really, really hold high, um, you know, frame or do whatever you want to do with it. Okay, so now here you see I'm putting in some thicker lines to, to clean it out. Um, but yeah, whatever you're going to do with it. Um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I was talking about what happens when you get to a point when you're afraid to keep going on a drawing because you're going to ruin it. The thought I had was, uh, ruin it. It's okay. You know, you'll never know if you don't take that step. And honestly, you have to be kind of willing to, to just make bad moves, make mistakes. And that's why they say, you know, you, you really don't grow if you're not willing to make mistakes. And that goes with everything. You know, you really need to tr like be open to making mistakes. And I, I knew I would, I, I, I realized, um, you know, that I'm going to be drawing for a very long time. It doesn't come down to the product. You know, one product is not, um, does not define who we are. It's, it's really the process. So as I draw, I allow myself to make little mistakes and I learn how to correct them in my drawing, you know, or I just learn Oh, I, I can see like this kind of cross hatching or that that kind of a thing didn't work. It actually looks kind of bad. I don't like it. I'm gonna just make sure I don't do that again because I want to avoid that thing. And I just don't, you know, I, I really pay attention to the things you really enjoy. And you just do more of that. And I think that's where our style comes from. Because what what you're gonna end up with with a page like this is just very different probably than what I would end up with. And some of that's just due to, you know, maybe skill level or understanding, knowledge, just basic knowledge of, of art and design. But at the end of the day, it's also flavor and style, like taste. Maybe you just actually enjoy a certain kind of a look and you don't enjoy another common look. Maybe you don't enjoy a look that everyone seems to enjoy. And so you want to do it real different, and that's awesome. I think that's what makes art really special, is you get to express yourself. That's probably what makes drawing really awesome, 
uh, in general, like even drawing outside of this kind of a page, this kind of an activity, like draw on your own. You get to literally draw anything you can imagine. It's almost like a superpower if you think about it, or a genie in a bottle. I could say, hey, you can create anything you can imagine. Anything. You could make the coolest, awesomest, craziest looking thing you've ever imagined. You have that at your fingertips. It's possible. Um, you know, as a kid, that idea was really, really cool. I, I, I had struggled a lot with figuring out what to draw. Um, but at the end of the day, I knew that that was a really cool um, potential with drawing. Was I don't have to just kind of accept what I'm given in life. I can actually create something that I really value. I really like and that I really want to see something that isn't being done and that's actually what made me create uh, copiography this whole process of making colored shapes and then having people draw on them to me I love drawing lines and I was like man I, that this needs to exist I don't know why it doesn't it, you know coloring books exist this is a reverse coloring book it's really the first of its kind and so I made it and, you know, we're working hard to, to bring more of it out there and share it with lots of people. And, and, you know, there's lots of benefits to it. But it really was that sort of ambitious, early kind of attitude of, you know, I'm going to make something that I, I want to make. And that's, that's real creativity, I think. So sometimes you just got to figure out what that looks like for you. And that takes exploring, you know. I, I drew, like, myself for a lot of years. And I don't think you ever stop drawing like yourself necessarily, but the more I would research and look around at what other people were doing and find out what I liked about what other people were doing, uh, my work just naturally changed, you know, my artwork. You know, a lot of these videos, I'm actually exploring what the potential is of a copyographic page. So I like the fact that not only can I put lines on and really just enjoy drawing lines, um, which I love a lot. I really, really like my line work. I'm like a big fan of myself. It took me a while to get there. But now you can see that I'm like, I'm actually shading a lot. And so I realized there's... These, these images, they're chock full of potential. And it's just, it's kind of a matter of, of playing with it and seeing, seeing what's there for me. You know, and I'm still doing that. And I designed this whole image. So I've drawn this turtle already from scratch. Then I, I converted it to a copiographic style. And, you know, I presented it. And now I'm redrawing it. So this doesn't actually look like how I originally drew it. And it's kind of awesome because I get to play with it. And I think that's what it really is for me. These kind of pages, like this kind of a drawing, that's all it is to me. It's playing. I get to just have fun. And I think I actually think drawing is, is kind of scary to people because they don't feel like they do it well. So it doesn't feel like fun. Although when you're a kid, you just do it and you don't care. You just express yourself and you have fun. So I'm hoping partially that this, you know, this art form really kind of helps people to kind of take a, a jump beyond that kind of like heavy, heavy feeling that draws you down and just lets you kind of draw. Cause you know, it's going to turn out semi decent. If you, even if you just follow the lines, so beyond that, you get to do whatever you like. You get to explore and have, just have fun. You know, I put in some, some kind of water movement, separating the leaves, even though the shapes really aren't separate. And I think I do end up detailing this foot because I want it to match the other feet. A little bit of, little bit of form. Again, using the side of my, my pencil because I want that nice, thick... Um, it's really just easier to do it with the side of the pencil. You could do it with the tip, but it would take you way longer, and I don't think it would look 
um, as nice. You'll get a lot of little lines. And I like to go through afterward and really beef up some of my lines. Um, because it helps certain parts read better. It separates other parts. And you can actually create like a nice balance to, um, to your image by doing that. It took me a lot of line, uh, sorry, a lot of years to really, really kind of get my hand to move in ways that I really, um, I really liked and you know it's it's funny because it is a subtle it's a, it's a hard thing to say and describe to people because it's, it's these small movements you just learn to make over and over and over how do I make an elegant line how do I make these like like these kind of shapes how do I do it like in one kind of go like this and there's just confidence here this is what this is you're seeing the confidence of my my hand movements so that's just something i've practiced and developed in myself and that was a choice you know because i actually want to to make really nice lines so here i thought you know maybe i'll, I'll shade behind some of these things to really help this mountain pop a little bit and draw the eye up a little bit more So I think that's almost the end of the video. I really appreciate you coming and listening to me if you made it this far. Um, I hope to make them any more. If you have any questions or comments, I'll be happy to try to make other videos for them or just send you a message back. Feel free to leave them here. Thanks.